Amen. Now, today is the first Sunday of the month of August. Can you imagine we are in August now? And the month of August in the Hebrew calendar means harvest month. That means this month there will be a great harvest coming to this church. And the word harvest here is also mean produce or increase. Whew, I don't know about you, but I'm claiming that. Hallelujah. God is going to increase. God is going to produce something in me and through me. Hallelujah. God is going to bless and a great harvest is coming to this church. Hallelujah. We're going to stand on that. Hallelujah. And today, in the first Sunday of the month of August, as usual, the first Sunday of the month, we come together as one church, one family, a household of faith. We come together to partake the Lord's communion. Now, I don't know about you. Do you, uh, do you look forward to that? Yes. I look forward to it. I would never miss any Sunday, but especially the Sunday of Communion Sunday because we only do it once a month. All right? We, I don't want to miss it because the communion is once again a time that we come before the presence of God and this is a commission, a commandment given by Jesus Christ himself to the church. A sacred practice that we do as a church and some church are, are, they are doing it every Sunday but we decided to do it once a month and this is, is in remembrance of what Jesus Christ have done on the cross for us and it is because of that cross you and I are to here together if it's not because of the cross why are we doing here all right. It is because at that cross, Jesus died on that cross that you and I can have for the forgiveness of sin and salvation. Now, I want to ask you this question here today. Why did you think Jesus died for our sin? Why did Jesus die for me? Why did Jesus die for our sin? We know that Jesus died for our sin, but why? I know some of you are thinking right now, I can see your brain moving. Some of you are shaking, you're not so sure. Some of you probably say, I know it's to be forgiven. So, okay, so that I can have a better life. Some of you may be thinking, oh, oh, so that my sin can be forgiven, so that I can have a wonderful, blessed life. So that I can receive all the promises of God. And some of you may be thinking, so that I can go to heaven. Yes, some people actually accept Jesus Christ to receive the forgiveness so that they can go to heaven one day. But the problem is that some of them waiting for heaven to come a long time before heaven comes, correct? Especially young people today. But some of you here say, oh, Jesus died for my sin so that I can be blessed and live a, prosper a, a prosperity lifestyle. Except Jesus should not interfere with me. Just bless me, that's it. Stay away from my life, what I want to do. But just bless me so that I can have more than enough. But anything else, Jesus stay out of it. Some of you may have this kind of thing. But the whole reason why Jesus Christ came and died on the cross is not only that you may be forgiven, it's not only that your sin may be cleansed and washed away by the blood of Jesus. The whole reason from the book of Genesis, we see that in the creation of mankind, when God created man first, hallelujah, and then second woman, sorry, <laughs> Uh, but in the creation of God, man and woman, what is the purpose? What is the purpose God created that? For a relationship, correct? So the ultimate purpose why Jesus Christ died on the cross, gave his life for us, shed his blood for us, suffered and died, so that we can be restored back into relationship with him. Because sin has separated us from our relationship with God. Just like in the Garden of Eden. Because of sin, the relationship was broken. They disobeyed God and sinned against God. And the relationship was broken. But the original intention of the creation was that man and God can have a relationship. In fact, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, God came to the garden and asked for him. Where are you? 
They have such an intimate relationship in that garden. God blessed Adam and Eve with all kinds of things. They have wonderful relationship and communication until sin enter into them. And God say once and for all, I'm going to restore the relationship between my creation and me, the creator. I'm going to restore it back. And once and for all, I'm going to send my son Jesus Christ. And he's going to die once and that's it. Now anyone that come to him and receive him as Lord and Savior will be restored back into a relationship with God. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except through me. That's all the whole purpose of it. If you are a Christian today and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your sin has been forgiven and that is all that you have, then you, you have missed the point. You have missed the point why, why Jesus has come. It's like, it's like starting a journey, the first step you took in your journey and then you stop. But there are 10 more steps you have to take. You miss the point if you don't take the second and third and fourth. And that's why the whole reason of this is that there is a restoration of relationship through what Jesus Christ has done for us. So when we partake the communion today in remembering of what Christ has done for us on the cross, we must remember the whole purpose is back to relationship. And not just any relationship, an intimate love relationship with God Almighty. Hallelujah. And thank be to God that through Jesus Christ now, we have a direct link of communication with God Almighty. Hallelujah. That's what we call prayer. Prayer means a communication between a human and God Almighty. That is a privilege that God has given to us, a creator, creation, and, uh, and to talk to create, Creator. It's a privilege. And that privilege comes because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But that's not the end. And in that, restoration work of relationship with God Almighty. God give us more so that we can establish, so that we can go deeper in that relationship. And He has given us the Holy Spirit. And He has given us the Bible. Hallelujah. I want to read one verse here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. He said, For Christ also suffered once for sin, the judge for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, that he might bring us, bring us to God. That's the whole reason, the real reason why he came and died for us, that we may be restored back to God the creator hallelujah and now you have given us the holy spirit and the word of god so that we can go deeper in our relationship hallelujah the intimate relationship that god has for us has been given and now he given us the holy spirit he sent the holy spirit to us that now through the holy spirit we may go deeper in our relationship with Him. And through the Word of God that is given to us today, we may know Him better and bring us deeper into a relationship with God how Almighty. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit first of all. Because God has given us the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 16, verse 13, they say, However, when He... The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he will take care of my and declare it to you. That is one of the work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he will come into our 
heart. Hallelujah. And He will reside in our heart. He will abide in us. And, and when He is in, in, in us, He will then do the work of revealing God to us. All right? The Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus and glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit will bring us back to the adoption that God did for us when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will give us all that the Father has for us. All that the Father has for us he will reveal it to us. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what he say here. The Spirit of truth. And the Spirit of God in, in us is to bring us closer to God. It's to bring us into deep relationship with God. The problem with us, especially the Pentecostal, the Spirit-filled Christian, they use the Holy Spirit for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that they can move in the gift of the Holy Spirit. They forget the primary Number one task of the Holy Spirit is not the gift of the Holy Spirit, even though it's wonderful. But the first task, its first foundation, first priority is to bring us back into deep relationship. Because out of that relationship, everything will flow. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14, say, For as many as led, are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if, if children, then heirs and heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You see, without the Holy Spirit, we won't know we are children of God. Right. Without the Holy Spirit, we won't know we have a Father. Jesus taught us to pray, correct? And what did He say to us when we pray? Our Father, correct? So God become our Father as symbolic of a relationship between His children and a Father. Yeah. Amen? And so that word Father means it talk about relationship between two parties. Yes. You, you, you won't call the crea creator a father unless you have a relationship. Right. Alright, so our father, that means that's a relationship. And the Holy Spirit is the one who quickens our spirit that's and right. causes us to bear witness. It causes us to say, yes, I have a father. Yes, I can pray and he will hear my prayer. I have a father and I am a child of God. That work is from the Holy Spirit. Without the work of the Holy Spirit, nothing like that will happen. In fact, I remember when I was a, a younger Christian, I was amazed. Suddenly, in a short time, I prayed to God the Father without doubt, without thinking that, Ooh, why did I call him Father? Who is he? What, what, what happened? It's like, before I accepted Jesus Christ, just before I accepted Jesus Christ, if someone tell me, oh, pray to Jesus, uh, or pray to God the Father, I'm like, who, what are you talking about? I know, thank you. But the minute I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when the Holy Spirit comes into my heart, everything changes. It's like immediately, I have no problem. I have no problem praying. I have no problem crying out to God. I have no problem saying, Jesus. I have no problem saying, oh God, my Father. What, what take place? What is the change here? The Holy Spirit. That's what it say here. The Holy Spirit caused our spirit to change. It resurrected our spirit that were dead. Now we become alive in Christ. And now that life in Christ that's in us causes us now to want more of God. Causes us one now to know God. Causes us one now to have a relationship. Causes us now to cry up and say, God, you are my father. You see that? That is the difference. The whole work of the Holy Spirit causes us to come and abide in Christ. And let me tell you, you in Christ are one. That's what the Bible says. Abide in Him that you in Christ can be one. And only the Holy Spirit can do that. 
And all this work of the Holy Spirit is to cause us to come to that relationship, the intimate, loving relationship with God. In fact, the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit has poured out His love into our heart. That love that the Holy Spirit poured into our heart, that love is for us not just to love God, but to love each other. That love caused us to have an intimate, loving relationship. We are not capable of having a loving relationship by ourselves. You know why? Because we are selfish people. True love have no selfishness. That's why we need God's love. By ourselves, we were never able to love God. Because we are too selfish. It will be always my ways, my, my time, my desire, me, me, me. It's always me. How many marriages are failed today based on their own love? A lot. Why? Because selfishness cannot be part of true love. And the true love that we need is the love of Christ. He, only He has the true love. Because the Bible says God is love. And when we abide in Him, we abide in His love. And in His love, we can have a relationship. Hallelujah. That's what God wants to do in our life. And the Holy Spirit, in our relationship with God, He enables us to draw closer to God. He enables us to come to a place of true desire for more of God. Just like the Apostle Paul said, I want to know Him more and more. That prayer, that cry come because the Spirit of the Lord has put that hunger in us. Because by our cell, our natural cell, we will not want it. By our natural self, we are selfish. We are all about ourselves. We don't want anything God. Why waste time? Why, why take time to talk to somebody or something that I cannot see or hear? But you know, the Holy Spirit changes all that. The Holy Spirit causes us to have that deep desire. In fact, in the book of Romans chapter 8, Verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. What weaknesses is he talking about? In the context of this verse, the weaknesses he's talking about is prayer life, our prayer life. All right? So it's not about weaknesses in knowing, not knowing how to cook well. That's not what he's talking about here. All right? The witnesses is talking here. The Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. And then he continues to explain, for we do not know what we should pray. So in the context of this, the witnesses is talking about us. Sometimes we don't know what to pray. Don't know how to pray. Because our brain is too small. We don't know everything. I don't know your needs. How can I pray for you? In my own words, in English, with my limited knowledge, I don't know what to pray. In fact, if you call me and say, just pray for me, I'm in trouble, and put down the phone, I'm like, but, but, what? You're in trouble? Well, what kind of trouble? I don't know how to pray. The Bible says, but the Holy Spirit, He's able to help us in our prayer. Even though we do not know what to pray, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be authored. Now He who searches the heart's Know what the mind of the Spirit is because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Hallelujah. You see that? I mean, sometimes I don't know what to pray, but you know what? The Spirit of God will tell me exactly what to pray. He'll give me a knowledge. He'll give me a revelation. He'll tell me, pray for this, pray for that. Or sometimes the Spirit of the Lord in me begin to pray through me. I begin to pray, pray in tongue. I begin to intercede in tongue. The Spirit of God pray and intercede through me. The Holy Spirit will always draw us back, always draw us back, will never cast us out, will never reject us, but always draw us back to God in terms of our relationship with God. That's the most important. You may not prophesy, you may not even move in the gift of the Spirit, it's okay. More important than all those things are your intimate relationship with God. That's the most important. That's what Jesus died for. The giver extra. 
but the in intimate relationship. Because you know what? If you don't have intimate relationship with God, then your Christianity becomes a religion. If your relationship with God is not intimate and love, it's become just blah. It's become like, like I try to find the right word to use. It's like <clears throat> mono. Yeah, okay, if you like music. <laughs> Right, it's like not, not, nothing special. But God wants us to have a traveling, a beautiful relationship with Him. You know, in my life as a pastor, for many years now, I've been pastor more than 35 years, and <clears throat> in my life, there are many times that I, I was so busy with ministry. I was busy with the church, I was busy with project, busy with program, busy with people, Busy with people, busy with people. <laughs> and many, many times, I'm busy interceding for people, interceding for the church, going to prayer meeting. All those things are good. I, I'm busy with those. I'm a pastor, so I, it's part of my responsibility. But the Holy Spirit will, will come to me sometime and say to me, you have gone away from the, the, the relationship. But I said, God, I'm still preaching. I still read the Bible. But God, I'm so busy with your works. And the Holy Spirit said, but you've gone away from the intimate, intimate, intimate relationship with me. It's like this. My wife, for example, all right? We should have an intimate relationship, loving relationship with her, me and her. But you know, sometimes I'm so busy, I taking care of everything for her. I cook for her, maybe I, 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 I clean for her, uh, maybe I drive for her, maybe I you know, sweep the floor, I, maybe I you know, fix the curtain, uh, maybe I <laughs> give her money, whatever. All those are good things. But if I don't spend time to know her as a person so that we can establish this loving relationship, Everything I did for her will be useless because that's not what she desires. She desires more than just that. You see that? And sometimes we as a Christian, we miss the point. We are so busy. We are doing this. We are doing that. Well, I'm praying. I'm interceding. I'm counseling. I'm blah, blah, blah. But how about your intimate relationship with God? Where is the time that you have quiet time and pour up your heart to God that God can reveal himself to you, that you can hear the voice of God? The Bible says, my sheep will hear my voice. They know my voice. Hallelujah. And that is talking about intimate relationship where you now have a deep relationship with God, whereby now you can hear the voice of God. Woo. I remember many years ago, I was in India, and I was talking to a man about relationship with God Almighty. And that man, he was like, whoa. You can have a relationship with God that is just mind-blowing. How? So I say, my prayer, you know, Jesus and all this thing. And then I say, and I can hear the voice of God. They said, stop, stop, stop. He said to me, stop. You can hear the voice of God. I say, yes. No, 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 no. That's too much for me now. Because nobody can believe that. Are you sure that it's the voice of God? I say, of course I hear the voice of God. If I don't hear the voice of God, then I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> of course, he's a person. And I can hear his voice. He can hear my voice. I can hear his voice. That is what relationship is all about. It's a two-way communication between God and me. And that's what God wants us to have. The Holy Spirit is given for that task, that work to draw us closer to Jesus and put that hunger every day in our heart. God, I want more of you. I want to know you. And it's not just about knowing God, but about knowing Him so that we can have that relationship. The second thing that, that given to us is not just the Holy Spirit, but the Word of God. The Bible is given to us for what purpose? To establish that intimate relationship with God. The problem with us, we take this Bible, the Word of God, as a knowledge. Right. We stop there. 
as a knowledge we stop there yes i know the bible the word of god reveal who god is reveal to us what he likes and what he doesn't like his ways his will and so forth i know that and we read the word for that purpose but it should not be just stop on knowledge the bible says knowledge puff up but rather that knowledge to help us in our relationship with God. The word of God is given to us for that purpose, relationship. Yes, if you know more of God, you understand more of God, you know his ways, you know his view, but what are you doing about it in terms of relationship with God? If you use it for any other purpose, you miss the point. You miss that God give us this word and some people call the word of God the love letters of God. It's given to us that we can have intimate loving relationship. It's not so that we like, whoa, I know a lot, whoa. I have PhD, whoa. I have PhD, preaching, healing, deliverance. <laughs> but the word of God is to, to make us hunger and thirst after him. The word of God should cause us to say, wow, this is my God. He's the creator. He's almighty, all-knowing. This is my God. The word of God should say, this is his will. This is what he wants me to do. This is what he hates. This is what I, I want to do to please him. Because in the relationship, in any loving relationship, that has to be you wanting to please the other person. You want to make sure you you love the person so much everything that you are doing is to help the person to be pleased and happy like my wife i love her so much i don't i'm not going to do anything to displease her if she hates chicken i'm not going to cook chicken for her she loves chicken by the way you see that so you know it's because a lot of time in our relationship it's all about me we don't take time to find out about the other person. That's why our, our relationship fail. Because it's based on selfishness. It's all about me, my way. Everything is me. What I like, what I don't like. So we don't take time. That's why we fail in relationship. The, the same with the, the church. We need to have relationship with one another and it takes time to find out so that we can build the relationship. You can't build if you don't take time. You know, the Word of God reveal God's heart to us. Right. So we know, so that if somebody says something to you about God, and you can sense this is not God because of your relationship, because you say, oh, no, no, no. Oh, the, uh, my God, He will never do this. Oh, my God, He doesn't say this. Oh, my God, He's not like that. Oh, my God, you know why we can say that? Because we know who He is. Yes. So the Word of God help us to establish that relationship. Because we know the heartbeat of God. We know His desire, His heart, His love. So we can say to him, no, no, I don't think, I don't sense this is right. Because this is not God. This is not the God of the Bible. Right. It's like some, sometime people come and say things about the church. Or let's say, let's say, for example, people say things about me. I wish they come and talk to me first. They need to hear my heart. Yeah. They just hear rumors or they think they know about something and they make decision or judgment based on that without talking to the person. Come and hear my heart. You know, for many years, I refused to put the sermons online. I told the people, I don't like my sermons to be on the internet. They say, why? I said, I do not want people to judge the church based on my preaching because I'm not a great preacher. I want them to come and get to know me as a person. Then let them judge my heart. Then maybe they will accept me as their pastor. Because if they watch me online and judge me and not wanting to come to ICC based on what they hear, yeah, this guy, I don't know where he's from. You know, when he speaks English, I don't really understand. His pronunciation sounds like he's from, mm hmm, I don't know where. Can't tell, can't tell. Oh, yeah. And I'd be, ah, no, I, don't, I don't think I want to go to ICC. You know, people do that a lot. You can't judge things based on what you read or what you... You got to talk to the person directly to know the heart of the person. And that's what I like. I like to talk one-to-one. -one. I don't like text. I don't like email. I like to talk one-to-one. -one. 
You have a problem with me? Come and see me one by one. I'm not afraid. See me. I'm not going to bite you. That's same with God. You got to know God. Don't be afraid of Him. He's open. He said, come. Come and know me. And He has given us the Word of God. Can you imagine if you don't have the Word of God today? We'll be guessing. Did God like this? Did God like that? I don't know. I don't know what He liked. We don't know. But we have the Word of God. And that Word is to help us to know His will, to know His plan, His purpose, His desire. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 say, All Scripture is breathed out by God. The Holy Scripture. We believe the Bible is the Word of God. It's breath, it birthed by the Spirit of the Lord. Every word, everything that is written in the Bible is God. That's what we believe. It's not a storybook, by the way. There's a story in it, but it's not a storybook. It's the Word of God. And we can stand on the Word because it came from God. And it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good works. Hallelujah. That's what the Word of God is for. Is that we may grow in the Lord. And in this church, we try to help you to know the Word of God better. But at the end of the day, the Word of God is not so that your hate knowledge grow. It's that your relationship grow. Yes. That your relationship become deeper. So how you use the Word of God in building your relationship, it's all up to you. The Spirit of the Lord will help you, but it's up to you. That means if God convicts you through His Word, will you do something about it? Will you take responsibility and change and be molded by the Holy Spirit? I remember when I was a young, a young man, I, I read the Word. I, I didn't know what is Christianity all about. I just was a young Christian. You know, so I, in those days, when you became a Christian, they hand you a Bible and say, read the Bible. You will know God. Okay. And pray every day. Okay. So that's what I did. I pray every day and read my Bible. But you know what? Without people discipling me. No one visit me, by the way. The pastor have never visited me, by the way. Bible, read every day and pray. And come to church on Sunday. That's it, man. And I read. And let me tell you, the conviction of the Word of God transformed and changed my life. But it's, it's still my decision to allow in my relationship with God to be changed and transformed to be more like Jesus. It's, it's still it's up to us. In this church, in this month, the month of August, we are starting what we call ICC Discipleship Journey, all right? And most of you already know the Discipleship Training Program, and some of you have gone through it, the Discipleship Training Program, level one, level two, level three. Great, God bless you. Now we're going to expand it, and you're going to grow more and more in the Word of the Lord, amen? And those of you that finished level one, level two, level three, you're going to move to the next level, and that's Christian Growth Program, all right? And in, under the Christian Growth Program, there are, we have offered four classes for you. And soon, you can, be, you can take these classes online. There will be video for you to watch. There will be notes, lessons for you to download. And at the end of the day, you, there may be a, a test for you, an exam for you to take so that, to help you to understand what you've been uh, studying, all right? And so if you finish level one, two, three, then you go to the next one, a Christian Growth Program, you will take the first one on prayer. Pastor Colleen is teaching the lesson, and soon we'll put the video up, we'll announce it to you. You will be uh, watching uh, the lesson, and with the notes, you can download it, and then the word, Pastor Rick is teaching on that, and the freedom in Christ. My mother-in-law have taught this, and we'll put it in, uh, online too with the notes, uh, that a lot more hours on that one and then principal witnessing uh, Tom is teaching on that uh, so all this lesson as you go through it bit one by one step by step no one jump ahead of themselves 
Okay, you can't jump from Christian growth program to Christian maturity. No, you take one, two, three, four, and then you jump to Christian maturity program. And in that, you have Christian uh, character and conduct. You have uh, principle of love, Romans and Galatians, mission, purpose of the church, worship, and then you go, 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 go. And all this basically take you through maybe two or three years to finish it. And you are more than equipped to be anything for the Lord. Hallelujah. You say, I want to be a missionary. You are more equipped than more, more missionary. Hallelujah. And all these are selected uh, uh, topics so that to, to help you to grow in the Lord. There are a lot more, like Old Testament, New Testament survey that we did not put, but later in the future we might do it. But that's just enough for you as Christian. If you take this, you will be more than enough to do anything for the Lord. I guarantee you that. Amen. And that's to help you to grow in His Word. But at the end of the day, everything you study is to build. Remember that. The primary reason is to build your relationship with God. Nothing else. And out of the relationship that you have with God through His Word and the help of the Holy Spirit, it will come everything else. Because through His Word, you will know the promises of God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says, the promises of God is yes and amen. And then we know that the word of God also builds faith. Right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of the Lord. Right? In the book of uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, tell us that. So when we have the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to show us, to reveal to us, and make the Word of God alive in us. Then we have the Word of God that confirm and the Word of God that bring us and build faith in us. So everything else we need in, in our continuation of relationship with God, we will be based on these two. If you have these two, the Holy Spirit and the Word, you will have faith, you will have love, you have everything you need, trust, everything. Because out of that, everything will come in your relationship. You will go deeper and deeper and deeper in the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the desire of God. Some people say, I want to have more faith. Then read your Bible. Study your word. All right? Listen to the word of the Lord. Pay attention to the word of the Lord. And, and not just pay attention to the word of God, but what the Spirit of God is trying to speak to you. Like today, I'm speaking this word you are listening to my preaching and this reading of the word, but the Holy Spirit may speak to each and every one of us differently according to the word and speak to us differently according to what He wants us to hear. That's right. And if you learn to pay attention, not just to the word, but to the Holy Spirit who reveal and, and enlighten us, then we will get the revelation of God. Right. And the revelation of God, when it's given to us, now it becomes our responsibility to do something about it. And the Holy Spirit will help us to do something about it that will bring transformation. And in that transformation, it will bring us growth because we become more like Jesus. And in that growth, we will grow also in our relationship with God. Hallelujah. And that is what it's all about. That is why we have to be more serious in doing this. How are you developing your intimacy with God today? What are you doing in your intimacy with God today? Do you set aside time with God? Do you allow God to speak to you? Do you allow God to change and transform you, your attitude, your character? What is the word of the Lord doing in your life? What is the knowledge of the Word of God doing it for you? You know, if you are a person that only study the Word of God and don't allow the Holy Spirit to do anything or speak or anything in your life, and you say everything is the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word, you know what happened to you? It becomes dead. The Word becomes a law. Then you become religious. But, and if you are the type of person that it's only the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the, the Word of God is not so important. It's the Spirit. You know why? If you are that type of person, you know what the danger is? You will be deceived by a different voice that you think is the Holy Spirit. Because you have no, you don't have the Word of God to confirm it's God. See, you need both. 
You need to balance both. The Spirit of the Lord will reveal. The Spirit of God is there to speak to us. And at the same time, the Word of God is confirmed. This is me. This is me speaking right now. I mean, I, we hear voices all the time. But is it God? How do we know it's God? The Word of God. Hallelujah. The Word of God. Always the Word of God. I hear voices all the time. Especially in the service. But I don't say it out unless it's scriptural. Unless I know this is a direction that the Spirit of the Lord wants me to go. I only speak when I know this is God and God has a direction and a purpose that He wants to accomplish. This is who God is. There has to be a, a good balance of both so that we can grow with the Lord. Our intimacy with God is our everything. It should be our focus. It should be our everything that we put in. Hallelujah. So what are you doing today in your intimacy with God? Make a plan. Be more intentional because your life depends on it. Let me tell you, your Christianity today or what Jesus Christ has done for you today depend on your intimacy with God. I have seen as pastors, Christian, born again Christian, that love Jesus, but have not developed, again, I want to use the word, have not developed the intimacy relationship with God. You know what happened to them? They die off. They die off. Knowledge cannot sustain you. Knowing who God is cannot sustain you. But your intimacy with God, with the knowledge that is given to you, will push you forward in your growth with the Lord. Today, as we come together to partake the Lord's communion, let us not just remember all what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us, but let us take this time today and say, God, you know, I know you. I want to know you. But help me not just to know about you, but to know about you so that I can know you personally. To the place that I know that you are my God, you are my creator, you are my everything. To a place that I can trust you fully. To a place where I can put all my hope in you. To the place I know you love me. To a place where I have your presence all the time with me. Intimacy with God does not, does not depend on an hour a day. Right. Reading your Bible or praying or interceding. And intimacy with God is every day and all the time with God. Right. When you lay down to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, when you're driving your car, when you're taking your shower. Right. You have intimacy with God. Because God is everywhere and He's with us all the time. The Bible says that He's in us. Hallelujah. Today, I want the, uh, the worship to come, the worship team to come. We're going to take this time to enter into God's presence. And, uh, and before we partake the communion, let, don't even think about it right now. But what I want us to right now, before we partake the Lord's communion, is that let's come to a place of recommitment. Let's come to a place as, as of surrender. Say, God, you know, I want to know you more. And if you have not taken time to know God in an intimate relationship, loving relationship, today is a day you can say, God, forgive me. Forgive me. You have died, died. You have done it all so that I can have a restored relationship. And I have just put it aside. Forgive me. Restore me back. Bring me back. Cause me to come back. Give me the deep desire and love for you to want to spend time with you, to hear your voice, to know you more. And then when we partake the communion, it will be so beautiful and wonderful. Let's stand together and let's sing this song as a prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. I want a communion server to come forward and serve communion. In this church, we practice open communion. If you are a Christian, we want to invite you to join us to partake the Lord's communion. As so the communion element has been passed around, just continue to be in an attitude of prayer and worship. Let the Lord continue to speak to us. Do a deeper work in us. Hallelujah.
Oh, Father, we need you. this great privilege we have to remember all that you've done for us father god we celebrate in all that you have done lord your death and the resurrection father god we just cannot thank you enough words are are inadequate to tell you how we feel lord We're, we so appreciate everything you've done for us and lord i ask that you help us not take it for granted but to Lord walk out this relationship with you Lord this sweet relationship with you that we have a privilege and Lord I pray Lord God that at this time you'll remind us of those who need to hear of you Father God that they also will be able to enjoy this wonderful relationship Lord God let us not be selfish and keep it to ourselves, but Lord, I pray that you cause our hearts to want to go and share with others the good news and the wonderful things that we now have in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, say, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he have given thanks, he broke it and say, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 25, in the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake the cup together. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him a big clap offering. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We thank you, God. Glory and honor belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Before we close, amen. Oh, so wonderful to sing I love you, Lord. Isn't it wonderful? You know, we are not ashamed, we are not afraid to declare our love for the Lord publicly. Amen? Amen. Amen. I told Connie when we first date, dated in Singapore, I said to Connie, to prove my love for her, I'm, go, I'm going to the mall and I'm going to shout in front of thousands of people in the mall, I love Connie! The only thing that's stopping me was her. Amen. I want to take this time before we close to thank each and every one of you that have made a mission faith pledge. Thank you for your giving, your pledges that come in for the mission. And if you if you are not if you, if you were not here during our mission faith pledge, please get one of the mission faith, faith pledge. You can make a new one for the next six months to December. Give it to the ushers or put it in the offering box, and so that we know by this month how much we have pledged, the pledges come in so that we can make new budget for our mission. Amen. God is good. Praise God. Are you still happy? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's, pr let's pray and let's close. Father, I just pray blessing over, over your people as we go today, as we celebrate your name. Father, let the joy of the Lord fill our heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone say, 